Good morning, this is Cindy. Welcome to my channel and to Maker Monday. And today we are making clusters with fabric pieces. It is a very drizzly dark day here in the Finger Lakes, so I have turned my light on. I'm hoping it's not going to glare too much over what we're doing. So for today, if you're going to craft along with me, you're going to need your scissors, a needle and thread, and I have three different threads here because I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to want to use. Um, you're going to need buttons, and I have a couple of different buttons here. I also have some brown buttons, and I have some orange buttons. I love that big one right there, but I don't know that I'm going to use it today because the things I'm doing are kind of small. A needle and thread. Let me set that aside for the moment. And then some fabric clusters, or some, or some fabric clusters, some fabric scraps. And I have a lot of different kinds here. And lace pieces, lace scraps. I have a bunch of those as well. And then burlap. And I have two different kinds of burlap. We'll use them both. We'll see which one we like the best. This one's just a plain burlap. This one is has a little bit of lace already on it. Uh, they both, I'm pretty sure, came from the Dollar Tree. I don't think I spent a whole lot of money on either one of these. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut my burlap down to size. And I think I don't want necessarily a big piece right now. So I'm going to cut that to there. And then I'm going to put a fabric scrap over the top of it. I'm not sure that I really want the triangle. So I'm going to cut that off there. We'll kind of make a little bit of an odd shape. And then a little bit of lace. That's kind of a big piece of lace. Do I have something a little smaller? I do. Right there. Cut right up along there. We'll put our point going the opposite way. So now I have a little bit of cluster. Uh, and the next thing I want to do is find some buttons for it. I don't have, I'm doing a journal that has a lot of yellow in it, but I don't have a lot of, I don't have any yellow buttons. So let's see what we have here. I am moving out of these bags because as you can see, they are not easy to open. Trying to find the opening on them is more difficult than I'd like. So I'm putting my buttons in tins as I get more and more Altoid tins. My husband likes his Altoids. All right, let's see what we've got here. Something that might go with that. Um, kind of thinking a little one. I don't know if I like that one. Well, that's a fancy one. We're gonna hold that for the fancies. That one's too close to the same color. Ooh, there we go. Here we go, it's kind of shiny. It may be glaring, hopefully not too much. And we're following the rule of three today. If you don't know what the rule of three is, it is actually an ancient concept. It goes back hundreds, if not thousands of years. Um, and that the eye seems to follow three better than it does two or one or four. And so we're going to follow the rule of three. I'd be happy to do a whole video on the rule of three if anybody's interested in it. I kind of like that glittery one. Let's put the glittery one in the middle. All right, and then I'm going to take my needle here. There we go, find the piece in the button. And then I don't have to do this a lot because this is not a button that's actually going to get a lot of wear and tear. It is going to be a decoration. So it's not like I'm gonna to have to be using it a lot. I did. Uh, quadruple my thread. Come on. Of course, I can't. I need to put my glasses on. I don't have my glasses on. That's part of the problem, I think. There we go. There. And I just crossed my button in, and now I have my button on. Next one up is going to be this one. So I'm not even going to cut my thread. I'm just going to come over here about where I want it. Pass it through my 
button. Decide where I really want that button to be. And come on down and pull the button in. I hope I'm still in camera. Part of the, I'm trying a new camera angle here and I don't always, I can't see the camera anymore unless I stand up and do this and I don't really want to stand up and do it. So what this is doing by sewing the buttons on, I'm actually connecting all three of my layers. Oops. And I don't have to glue anything. There we go. So I passed that through twice just to make sure it's firmly attached. And then I want to put my last button on. Get that out of there. So let's get that in. And I crossed the other one, so I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to cross my stride. My, instead of putting them this way, I'm doing them so that they make a cross. There we go. There. Now, yeah, it, there's a lot of stuff on the back. Doesn't matter. Nobody's going to see it because that's what the part that gets actually glued down. I saw Shabby Dabby Duda make clusters like this. And if I can find it again, I will link it below so that you can see what she was doing with her clusters. But pretty much it's what we're doing here. And there we have a little cluster. I can take that off of there. I want. And if when I go to put it in a journal, I can do it as an embellishment. I can put it on the side of a page as a tab. I can put it on a journal card as a as a topper on a journal card. All sorts of things that you can do once you've made your clusters. So let me Go ahead, I've got this other piece of burlap here. And let's grab a slightly different color. These are a couple of pieces from a different journal top that I just did. And I haven't actually made this journal. But we'll put that on there. And then I think I want a white one. And since I don't have another tin out... We'll just dump them here, dump a few of them. Oh, that's a pretty one. There's a nice little flower, although it looks like I might have two, fl two flowers. Yeah, I do. So I don't want to use those because I might choose to use those on a set somewhere else. But that's just a shirt button. So we'll use the shirt button. And this is obviously a smaller piece. And oh, I like that to bring in the, the uh, burlap. Whew, bright colors. And let's find a pretty teal to throw in there. Okay, which means I might not want you. I might want two different shades of this teal. There we go. I like that. All right. Oh, you know what I didn't put on here? I didn't put my lace on there yet. Hang on. I want to throw a little lace in there. So let's put a little lace at this nice little piece here. Actually, I'm thinking I might like that piece. So let me put my lace right there. I know you're probably sitting there going, um, hello, lace. You're not putting your lace on. Because, again, rule of three. Artists have been using the rule of three for, like I said, centuries. Um, it is, in paintings, they have three different points, and it draws your eye to a specific spot. Builders use the rule of three, and I'm going to do this one differently. I'm not going to cross it. I'm going to go this way. Last time I crossed it, this time... I did not. Why? Oh, just cause. 
no specific reason. But yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff written about the rule of three. So I am putting it, like I said, if you want to know more about it, put it in the comments and I will do a whole video on the rule of three. I think I'm going to do one more on that one just because it only has the two holes in it. Come on. I say that with such confidence, like I can actually get the needle back in there. Come on. Oh, for crying out loud. There it is. I got it. Sewing on buttons was one of the very first things my mother taught me how to do. I think because one of the things she hated was sewing buttons on when we would pop them off of our shirts or off of our jeans. And so I think one of the reasons my, my brother learned how to do how to sew buttons on. My sister did. I did. My dad already knew how to do buttons. Everybody knew how to do their own buttons. And so I have made sure that both of my kids know how to do their own buttons. My husband knows how to do his own buttons. And it's not that you mind it. It's just, it's time consuming. And you pop them off pretty easily. Okay, so there we go. Now we have another piece. Where did I put my other one? Oh, I'll find it. It's around somewhere, the one that I just made. Oh, it's right there. Okay, so now we have two. Okay, let me. I wanted to try it with this fabric. So this one I'm only going to do, this one has metal in it. I'm going to do slightly larger, and I'm going to... Pin that bag down so I don't have it all over the place. And then I'm going to grab the metal in here. Maybe. You know, it might just be easier to do it with my fingers. There we go. Grab the metal and take that out and throw it away. Um, I don't want the metal in there. Because I don't know how I'm going to want to use this, but I certainly am, do not want to be poking myself with the metal. So there we go. Took the metal out of the sides. You could do that with any ribbon. Uh, any ribbon that has the metal in it, just take it out. If you don't like it, take it out. Okay, um, I'm going to cut this one in half and take the point off of it. I don't want that point. I'm going to put that this way. And then I want to grab a little bit more Lace, where did I just put that other lace? I kind of like this. There's a flower here that probably doesn't show up very much. But I want to put that flower right over the top of it. So now we have uh, burlap and lace. We have four things going on here. And a little bit of fabric. So this one I might also use in this uh, yellow journal. So I want to stick with the neutral colors. Well, I have all of these really pretty cool buttons over here. And I kind of like that one. Although it's got the, the bigger shank on it and so that makes it difficult to use. That's when you're doing this sort of thing, you've got to figure out what kind of buttons you want. The shank one, that's that's one that has this, this little piece that sticks out here, are really pretty. I like that a lot, but it's not going to lay flat against your fabric piece. And it, that means you're going to bulk up your journal on it. So this is, if you're crafting along with me, um, it's just a lot of fun. It's actually pretty relaxing to just sit here on a rainy day and ply with your needle and thread. No glue today. Just doing a little bit of sewing. 
and not even a lot of sewing. Just enough to say, here's something different. Something you can put in your journals that dresses it up a little bit. I'm running out of thread. Okay. All right, we're going to tie this one off. And to tie it off, you just go under, come back through the loop, and knot it, and you do it a second time. Under any one of the threads, come on, through the loop. Come on. And knot it. Boom. Quick and easy. If you are enjoying these videos, please make sure you watch all the way through to the end. Um, I am trying to get those watch hours up so that I can give you guys some goodies through YouTube. And I have to have 3,000 watch hours. And I'm just under, just under 2,000. So put the video on, let it play in the background, share the video, comment on the video. The more comments it gets, the more engagement there is with a video, the more likes a video gets, um, the more likely YouTube is to put it on other people's uh, home pages, and then they find me, and then I get to talk to them too. There we go. That one was being stubborn. So just a little bit of hand sewing today, making those. Now I am going to, okay, that doesn't have, that's not useful. That was the stitching that holds the first layer of lace on here. And obviously it's not held on there very well. Well, it is Dollar Tree ribbon, so you know you get what you pay for. Okay, so I did that. I'm going through my loops. Come on. Going through a stitch. And going through my loops and knotting. Done. All right, so that is three clusters that we have made today out of a little bit of burlap, a little bit of fabric, a little bit of lace, and like I said, they make really nice journal toppers. I'll go over the top of a, of a piece like this. If you if this is a pocket, they can go decorate the pocket, you know, put it down in the corner or wherever. They might just make nice little decorations that you can then just grab. You sit there and you, you on a rainy day like today, you make 12 or 15 of these and then you got them to play with and you have them to use forever. Well, not forever. You have them to use until you use them all up and then you make more. It's simple. All right, if you're enjoying these videos, again, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you're clicking that like button. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if you have made these uh, and if you, or how you use them. If you've made them, how do you use them? In the meantime, this is Cindy signing off.